Rachel Sullivan, landscape architect. I qualified at Edinburgh University and I worked abroad a lot of the time and I'm now a supply teacher in horticulture at Borders College. And for the first half, I'm just going to give a brief talk about horticulture and why I love it. And the second, if you can give me a heads up after five minutes, please, I want to run through some slides on a project that we're doing, which is outreach in Kelso High School. Okay, which really takes us up from, uh, which covers uh, really why, how to get students interested in horticulture. Uh, my love of horticulture came from a module that I did as a landscape architect. Um, at Edinburgh Uni when we went to the Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh and just studied the plant stock um, and quite <laughs> in, in, in uh, project, well, we could start with the seed basically, which is very small, very unassuming, but from which all the trees come and you know, our whole world is basically based on uh, you know, the miracle of the seed. And uh, a lot of our plant stock actually come from the Himalayas, so it became a sort of a global thing. And I worked abroad, um, I worked in a garden in Sri Lanka, uh, and um, the thing about horticulture is you can come from a very scientific point of view, or a very artistic point of view. For example, uh, from the science, you can get into the seed, into the uh, uh, making of different hybrids and strains for sugar beet farming in Belgium, or forestry, or you know, uh, any sort of agriculture. Hybrids for nurseries, the job of the nurseries and sales, and you know, so you can work as an individual um, or in a team. You know, uh, and, and then at the other end, which is more artistic, there's more of the design side. And uh, as a horticulturalist, you can be involved in planting up private gardens, public gardens, working on estates, actually integrating an awful lot of you know food production <coughs> along with um, along with aesthetic uh, production, um, tourism, taking a guide around gardens. I mean, I'm kind of like throwing a great big umbrella at you because the thing about horticulture is that it is a huge umbrella and it's actually very easy to move up and down and sideways within it. It's all, it, it actually, can, I mean, everybody can be interested in horticulture. Um, and so, yeah, so, so I, I was in Sri Lanka for a long time, um, and there the gardens actually worked with the horticultural depart department, and the 16-year-olds came along and cut the grass and learned how to... It's a very nurturing profession, uh, profession as well. It appeals to both men and, uh, boys and girls, men and women, and, uh, and, it's, and it's all about sort of bringing things on for a, you know, a display at the end of it. Um, so, it, so it kind of like, it crosses an awful lot of uh, boundaries in, in areas that we discussed today, from our culture to landscape, nurseries, estates, gardens, public, private, and commercial food cropping. I worked in the, uh, in the pear industry in Belgium for a short while, for example. So you get, you get involved in pests, and you know, but, oh yeah, it, 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 I, I should have actually pinned it like you guys to slides, but never mind. Um, jobs within the field, we've got you know, management jobs, administration jobs, um, on the ground, um, you know, weeding, maintenance, and then in nursery sales and marketing. So they're really, they're, you can put on a lot of different hats in horticulture. And I think the important thing is to get uh, kids young um, interested in growing things because they really love it. You know, oh, well, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, you got these little little sets with little compost pots, and you know, within a few months or within a few days, in some with some seeds, they'll sprout. So you get results very, very quickly. And then, um, and what I'm learning at Borders College now as a supply teacher is just the amount of um, you know uh, a a lot of a lot of care with each student in terms of how you actually maintain that plant into adulthood. So, um, so it's, it's not it's not just an overnight thing. Um, and a, a bit lost there. Environmental projects um, and oh, another growth area in horticulture I did want to mention is, is therapy and um, uh, you know dementia gardens and in you know men, in, 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 yeah, mental health and therapy. And the other one is in conservation, which is the conservation of seed banks, old-fashioned species, so that we don't run away with one, uh, lose our uh, you know, old-fashioned brownie apples or anything like that. So we're talking this historical, there's artistic, there's scientific, there's you know just so many different. You can ask me about that later as I go around the tables. Um, so it's curatorial. I, uh, yes, I came from an artistic side. I did a lot of work in actually tableau illustration, would you believe? So again, you'll get maybe kids coming up. Fine, thank you very much. You'll get kids coming up 
you know, they really don't know what to do. But something like holistic culture can really kind of lead them gently through um, into whatever, you know, they might end up just being a flower place like Georgia O'Keefe, or they might be working on a state, you know, and make, uh, uh, potting up, um, you know, red currant bushes, or being a guide, whatever. Right, now how do I work this? Please. Come on, go the wrong way around. <laughs> you see, <laughs> I'm of the old fashioned variety, okay? Right, oh, can you see that or is it too dark? This is Kelso High School. It's a job that they, it's, it's, I'm doing an outreach one, one afternoon a week at Kelso High School for Gordon College. We've got eight students and it's a new school, so they've got a polytunnel. These are all vegetable beds and they're covered in weeds, okay? This is a garden shed. So essentially the landscape architect who built the who built the, the grounds um, incorporated this for for, for, for children to, to, a, to to learn about horticulture. Sadly in two years they ended up like that. Weeds everywhere. Polytunnel, glass house, all the equipment's there, but so I get eight kids in and what do we have to do? Dig, dig, dig. So for, I'm, this, this, these eight slides are four weeks before the summer and four weeks after the summer. This is before the summer. So I've got to get them digging, digging, digging. And um, this is it. They're actually planting strawberries, okay? So we have to come up quickly with ideas that something, we can get something in at the end of the summer for these kids to be able to, when they come back at the end, uh, uh, beginning of the summer, when they come back at the end, there's a few strawberries to show. Um, they love digging, so that was good. And um, despite, despite the weather, they managed to clear the weeds. I mean, it's all about motivating them. And it's, it, it is, you know, it's physical, there are results, it's not in the classroom. Um, one of these kids here is actually coming to Borders College to do agriculture. There's another two that are interested. One is interested in coming to do forestry. So again, as a horticultural, you know, a twice a week class, we're, we're getting almost 50% of these kids actually wanting to come to, come to the college, which I think is the best the best gateway to, uh, the best entrance to horticulture that um, um, I can imagine. I mean, I came in at university level and found, you, that's what I mean, you can come in at any level, rise up, go sideways, as you like. So this is after the summer and they've got their strawberries, but their strawberries are covered in weeds again, so the poor boys have to get back to do, doing that. Um, the only slight problem here is that when a landscape architect goes onto a school site to design something like this, they must make sure there's water on site, because these guys didn't. We have to carry water in with uh, watering cans every every week. So um, after the, after the strawberries, we then oh well, this is Jack. This is just a. A little thing that came up, we're doing water harvesting off a roof and the gutter didn't work. So I just sent him off and he did his own thing and he came back and fixed it. So again, within the practical, um, the practical time in the school, they can just exercise their imaginations and, and, and work towards uh, solutions. We, did, we planted dahlias. See that these beds were completely covered in weeds. They've now got green fertilizer on them. They've been rotivated and planted dahlias. That's another thing I meant to mention in horticulture. You can go into flower arrangements, flor uh, florists, and all that sort of thing. So there's a, there's a huge, it's a, yeah. So that's the other part of the aesthetic thing. Uh, flower sculptures and stuff. So, um, and some of the boys I've got are quite sort of prankster, so I, I got them picking flowers and taking them home to their school teachers. Talk about <laughs> arsenic, <laughs> never mind. So, the teachers got the old bunch of flowers in there. In the, in the polytunnel at the back, um, all those little, little, little white things, they're all seeds. So, we planted everything from seed, a lot from the seed. Um, the guy I work with is, is, is a very, very good horticulturalist. And um, so we planted wallflowers, pansies, all these things that will last over winter. And, and again, the boys, they'll come back in a week and there's the seeds sprouting. And then we pop them on and, uh, um, and so it goes on. And that's it. Sorry, I'm very short, a bit chaotic. Horticulture.